Welcome to the Facts That Matter. I'm Erin Wilson, and in this episode, we are going to discuss four facts about multifamily and the next generations. First, I want to introduce Henry Pye, security industry expert in multifamily communities. Welcome, Henry. Good afternoon. Glad to have you on the show. Now, let's get to the facts. The fact that nearly 22% of the population are millennials, making them the largest generation. It's a fact that 74% of millennials aged 25 to 35 years old prefer to rent than purchase a home. It's a fact that millennials want housing with amenities such as high-speed internet, tech-enabled smart homes, pet services, and package management systems. It's a fact that millennials value their free time and have no issues about leaving upkeep and maintenance to a landlord. Now for some questions. With millennials being the largest generation and nearly 75% preferring to rent rather than buying their home, what does this mean for apartment owners and developers? I think millennials are part of the overall trend toward uh, multifamily or rental housing. Increasingly, we have seen people, they're not growing up and entering the workforce and starting families with the desire or the need to own their residence. No, it's a large shift. And I think millennials are leading this charge, but I think you see it in very many different demographic groups. The challenge for multifamily is that while they may be quite happy or prefer to rent their residence, they still expect all the amenities they would have with a detached single family home. And in many ways, that is a challenge for us and definitely a difference from what we have been doing for 20 or 30 years. So with, with that and, and the amenities that they want and the top amenities being technology, smart homes, smart credentials and devices, how does the security industry need to, uh, what do we need to do to meet those demands and what the millennials and some of these demographics want that we don't currently have? You have to understand that for the last 20 or 30 years, when you've mentioned access control or any kind of, you know, digital locking or electronic locking, the goal has been to keep third parties out of our communities to keep them secure with only residents within that access control envelope. Now, however, every resident or most residents, they may live on the 25th floor of an urban high rise. However, they want all the amenities, they want the lifestyle as if they owned a, you know, a brick stone with ground floor access to the street. So that means we have to be able to get pet walkers, friends, Uber Eats, almost all these different services um, and solutions from the street into our building and either across the community to another building or up an elevator bank and to a person's unit and in some cases into the unit. Um, for developments, that means we need completely new multifamily centric access control solutions and locking solutions. Um, for our existing communities, and we're just beginning to tackle this now, we need the ability to cost effectively upgrade, augment, retrofit, whatever the verb is, our existing systems, because to be quite honest, a gut replacement is often cost prohibitive. Yes, that's, that's the hard part. Um, you know, pe different people want different things. They want all those amenities. They, they, they want that freedom, but then they want what comes with being in a, an apartment community, a multifamily community, where they don't have to do some of the other things, maintenance, upkeep, and stuff. And multifamily buildings now are using both a mix of, of residential and, and commercial project products. And that leads to challenges of its own, trying to get those different products to work together to provide what... Um, people want in these you know to have that single home atmosphere but the ease of a community so how do we what do we need to do on this collaboration of products 
to meet those needs, but still be code compliant because residential products don't necessarily meet all the code requirements of a commercial facility. No, and you know, multifamily is, I mean, historically we have borrowed technology solutions from both single family residential and commercial. Um, that creates problems just because if just because it works in an office building doesn't mean it will meet our functional needs in a an apartment community or multifamily community. Just because it works in a single family home does not mean it's code compliant in a multifamily community. For example, only a small fraction of the available Z Wave locks that you see in any Best Buy or Lowe's are even code compliant from either a fire rating and or a wind and storm rating requirement. You know, the Yale Sure and a few others are have fire ratings, but the vast majority of them do not. Um, similarly, commercial access control systems and traditional guest entry systems struggle with the complexity of apartment communities. It's no longer the instance where I have a gate surrounding the community or just one door at the street that I have to buzz someone through. Increasingly, we have multiple access control openings or access controlled elevators or other impediments to guests getting, once I get them in through that one door from the street into a lobby, it doesn't mean I've, I've succeeded. It doesn't mean they've gotten to the unit and increasingly in the unit. Um, and then you layer on the, the need, a num an increasing number of multifamily management companies, owners, developers, wanna make sure these solutions are also tied into our management systems. Now, lots of access control systems have historically been integrated with hotel and other verticals, and now we're beginning to do the same in multifamily, where you have those APIs to allow for efficient operation. Um, and then lastly, we really need to talk about the difficulty and the cha unique challenges that we have with products and services, so-called on-demand products and services. The reason being is that when I'm ordering food from Whole Foods to have delivered, I can't extend the temporary Bluetooth app. I can't give them a hard credential. My only option is a numeric code. Now, numeric codes tend to be challenging and should only be used on a limited term basis. However, they're probably in, you know, an evil necessity in the near term future for us to get certain services and solutions like pet walkers, like dry cleaning and other things delivered into a unit. Yeah, and, and to, to get them through that first door, through the lobby, into the elevator, into the unit, the, those technologies are, are there somewhat, but they're not coordinated. It, it requires an owner to have multiple systems to be able to do that, which isn't necessarily efficient or cost effective for the owner and then the the residents have to have multiple credentials so that's that's kind of a challenging but when you get you know have the the pet services and the uber eats and the dry cleaning and all of that where some residents want those but other residents may not want those so how do owners deal with the the residents that want all these services but the other ones that that don't want them and don't want to pay for them or at least have them a la carte if they want them at all. This is where you're beginning to see solutions that were either crafted only for multifamily or are new products crafted with multifamily as one of their primary focuses. You know, it's we are quickly moving past the point where I can have a standalone access control, standalone electronic lock, standalone guest entry. It's not cost effective, it's not functional, it's not scalable. So you know, if you may be the best commercial access control system out there, but if there isn't a way to deploy that solution and integrate it with electronic unit door locks and guest access solutions, then it isn't very useful to us. At a basic level, all residents need to, at a minimum, have a common credential and a common mobile app for all amenity area building and unit doors. And then you have to have, give the residents the ability to 
at a minimum get a service or delivery to their unit door and increasingly in the future into that unit. Now, with regards to amenities and the sharing of them throughout the community, the second part of your question, when you're building a community for 250 or 300 units, which could be three or to 500 people, you're never going to satisfy everyone. Generally, you're trying to create a selection of amenities that meets the preferences and expectations of the, the majority of your residents or future residents. Now, some of these are things that can be a la carte, but the vast majority more things that are shared by the community. And this really isn't any different than HOAs. You know, if you have a playground that is being maintained by your HOA and you don't have children, obviously you could argue that, you know, I'm paying for something I don't get the benefit for and not interested in. That's just part of being a member of any community. It's not that I'm not concerned about it, but almost every manager owner and developer is trying to create the most profitable and successful community. And generally that means doing the best job possible in selecting the amenities that address most of your residents' needs. I think one of the things you said, scalability, and that seems to be what what we need the most is is that scalability so that they can can um, do what they need to meet most, but also have the ability to add more features and more benefits and, and more um, amenities to, to add that pet service as they find out that more and more people want the pet service or, or um, any other uh, things, the Uber Eats, the dry cleaning services. Yeah, I mean, it, a lot of that starts with the network on site. When you look at a new community or existing community, almost every new solution access control camera solution iot solution whatever it is requires that network so it starts in having a network that extends throughout your community that is not something traditionally multifamily has had though it's moving in that direction as quickly as it can because not only does it make the resident experience and your existing technology solutions better but it also enables and significantly lowers the cost of all future technology deployments so to be honest, without that network, every little technology solution, every amenity you push out is gonna be that much more expensive. And that's definitely true of access control and unit, and unit door locks and guest access. And, and with you know, the current environment and more and more people working at home and that scalability and that network and more smart homes, smart devices, that also includes the ability to be able to increase internet capacity and capabilities and bandwidth there. You had 500 people in, in one place trying to use a, a community's single network service, that's going to slow it down. So that's going to add that much more that needs to be done with the owners. True. And as owners you know, adopt things like manage high speed internet access networks in their communities, those are quite capable of meeting all those needs. You know, right now we're trying to, to forecast when it's going to be necessary to actually go not just provide a gigabit to each unit, but provide up to five gigabits to unit or higher. Now, the infrastructure will support it usually today. If you have a managed network, it's just a matter of the edge electronics. And as those prices go down, you will see us providing multiple gigabits all the way up to 10 gigabits quite easily um, just by upgrading the edge equipment. It's one of those things where once you hit a, a, a cost threshold, you'll see more communities doing it. But any new community that has a managed services network, you know, high speed, you know, manage high speed Internet access solution network. And anywhere one has been retrofitted can generally go provide more than enough bandwidth today and can probably easily, without much equipment grade, expand significantly upon that. So with the, the need for scalability and the need for being cost effective and the need to have uh, the ability to add people so that they can get through all these uh, control points, for all that matters, what matters the most? You know, functionality is always going to be it. It has to work and meet the needs of the residents and the management team first. Second is kind of curious. It's generally going to be cost, 
But obviously, you have to consider, um, you know, code compliance and other things. You know, it, it has to function. It has to be code compliant. And then you look at cost. Um, and cost is both CapEx and some present value calculation of OpEx. And that's what people are trying to do now on a lot of the new technology solutions. What is my end cost? When do I have to refresh equipment? Who's paying for repairs? I mean, there are a lot of questions we don't necessarily have. We're not 100% sure of the answers of. But we're trying to do our best. I think some of those, we don't even know what the questions are yet. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. You know, as as our society grows and changes and, you know, the preferences and expectations of our residents change, so do our communities and so do we. I mean, we all have to evolve um, to remain competitive. And that's what part of managing and owning a community or consulting on behalf of owners and managers is all about. So what we need to meet these requirements and demands is something that is cost effective, cost efficient, scalable, upgradable to meet demands that we might even know about yet. Correct. You know, and generally you're looking for, you know, comprehensive solutions, guest access, controlled parking, building and amenity area, unit access that are increasingly we need to be tied to our core management, maintenance, and other systems. Um, that, as I said, enable residents and others who need to, you know, walk through the community. That means Bluetooth apps. It means hard credentials. It means numeric code, limited use numeric codes. Now, as I said before, I don't particularly care for numeric codes. They can be misused. Um, however, it's the reality today. It's the only way we can get certain parties, in particular product deliveries and things like that, through our communities, especially when we have multiple access control points. Yeah, so what we need for the future is something that is going to meet all those needs to meet the needs of the, the up and coming generations, but also meet the needs of other generations that are moving to um, apartment living, community living, that will meet everything that everybody wants, internet, smart homes, concierge services, whether it's for the pet or for the dry cleaning. And also, I mean, you have to be aware of where you're building and the type of residence you're going to have. It's not uncommon for us in very, you know, in the Northeast or in some other areas of the country to actually keep a few mechanical locks on hand um, or at, at a very minimum, make sure that a hard credential can be used to get from the street all the way through and into your unit. And that's because there are certain religions that, you know, on one day a week will not allow you to use any technology or don't. And it varies what that means. So a hard credential may work. You may need a mechanical key. So you need to be aware of your building and the type of residence you're going to have and accommodate. You know, there have always been a couple of cases where, you know, manufacturers were, and providers are almost sued for religious discrimination as they kind of got a little carried away with the technology part of it. And on that, with the technology, you also have to be aware of if you're any kind of hurricane area that you could lose power for one, two, three, four weeks or more, depending. So a lot of things to consider, a lot of things that we need to do to meet the demands and requirements of, of multifamily. A lot to think about. No, and hurricanes are a very good example. That means you have door locks that are tour and non-tour and battery operated. Um, it means they have UL wind and storm ratings. And if you're in Florida, gone through the paperwork for the Florida building code, it means access control systems tied to hardware that's, well, preferably fail safe so that first responders and others can get into the building. Um, and then everything else that entails. I mean, it, as I said, you need to know where you're building and what the local jurisdiction and, and weather and site and design and everything else are going to require for an individual development or community. So we need to think about location, demographics, codes, religious requirements, uh, the technological amenities that, uh, that everyone needs. So um, the industry has a lot to do 
to meet all those needs and have it in one cost effective, scalable product for the owners. Yes, and we're all struggling to do it. Um, owners are not necessarily any more patient than residents are. You know, they want to have things now and we're trying to get there, but manufacturers and providers and others are, you know, they're working hard and diligently trying to do it, but it can't occur overnight. And we're seeing systems improve each year. I'm very optimistic for next year, especially with regards to unit door locks. Um, and we'll see what ends up shipping as first and second quarter gets here. But, you know, we're making progress. We're moving in the right direction. We're probably just not all the way there yet. Any final thoughts before we go? I'm good, I think. Thanks for joining us, Henry. I'm Aaron Wilson, and thanks for joining us on another discussion about the facts that matter. Remember, subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell to be alerted to new Facts That Matter episodes.